What's up everybody, Just Breathe Singh here and Kathy Wood has come out and said that we are in a recession right now and the economists and strategists that are saying that we're not in a recession right now are wrong. We have a lot of economists saying that we might be seeing a recession in 2023 and what Kathy Wood says is that she disagrees. She says that in 2023, it'll be us coming out of the recession. Now, Kathy Wood, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is the celebrity investor behind the ARK, ARK and ARKK and all the other ARK innovation funds. So she invests in technology, innovation, and a lot of those types of startups. When the COVID pandemic hit, the ARK Innovation Fund saw a massive boom because they're part of you know, a lot of that speculative side of things. So when the money printer opened up, when interest rates dropped, the valuation of the speculative startups soared. And so her funds made a ton of money. And then over the last year or so, when interest rates started to rise, as we started to see the Federal Reserve Bank change course, those speculative investments also got hit extremely hard. So Kathy Wood has been on the news a lot because first she was making a lot of money, then because of her fund was losing a lot of money. And now she's been pretty vocal about the economic slowdown. And what she's saying is that the United States is already in a recession, but she says it's going to be very different than the 2008 and 2009 recession. The 2008-2009 recession, she calls that a systemic recession and a financial crisis. She says that what we're going to see is nothing like that Instead, she calls it a, quote, garden variety, where it's more of an inventory crisis because we're having all the supply chain issues and we're facing a lot of other issues in the economy, which um, make it difficult for people to purchase things, get access to things, and that's causing the price of things to go up. And so what she's saying is that it's going to take another year to 18 months for that to fix itself, and then the economy will start to recover. So she's saying essentially that we are going to enter a recession or no, we are in a recession, but it's going to be a mild recession and it'll be completed by the end of 2023. So you can kind of see how there's like a different spectrum of opinions of what's going to happen. And it's important for you to listen and pay attention to the different ones. That way you can make smart decisions for yourself because someone's going to be right. Someone's going to be wrong and only time will tell. You have some people that say no recession. It's not possible. No economic slowdown. Some people that are saying that we are in a recession right now, but it's going to be mild. This is what Kathy Wood is saying. And then you have some people that are more uh, kind of on the really bad scenario where they're saying that we are going to enter a bad recession if we're not in one already. And we're going to see a lot more inflation and things are going to get a whole lot worse. We could risk potential hyperinflation. We have a potential currency crisis. We could see a depression. So you have a whole different range of like temperature scale of how bad this recession will be. This is where you want to be educated about the different opinions. That way you can just understand and not be shocked by what could potentially happen. Now, an interesting thing that Kathy Wood brought up is that the concern for her is not inflation, it's deflation. And this is kind of what she was saying uh, back a couple of years ago as well, where uh, she kept saying we need more inflation that the Federal Reserve Bank shouldn't be raising interest rates, that inflation is a good thing because technology will create deflation because she's a big tech person. So what her whole thesis is that if tech companies and innovation companies can grow, they can reduce the cost of products because we can make things faster, cheaper, easier, and that will cause the price of things to go down. So we don't want to try to fight inflation. In fact, we should try to embrace it and let technology reduce inflation. That's her thesis. And the reason why she says that inflation is not a concern has to do with metals prices, gold prices, because what she said is that in August of 2020, gold prices peaked at about $2,000 an ounce. And then they have been falling in around 17 to $1,800 an ounce now. So it, gold prices have fallen. So if there is so much inflation, why hasn't gold prices gone up? Now, I am an investor in physical gold. I also have some money in the ARK fund. So it was great when the 2020 pandemic happened. It sucked over the last couple of years. But again, looking at things for the long term, this is where you never know who's going to be right. And you want to be able to invest in a way where no matter what's happening in the economy, 
you will always be a winner. Sure, some things are not going to do well in every part of the economy. Some things are going to do well in a boom economy. Other things are going to do well in a bad economy. But this is where you want to be able to position yourself in a way that you can take advantage of opportunities that might come no matter which type of economy that you're in. Now, of course, if you're looking for an easy way to do that, the first thing you have to do is you got to stay up to date on what's happening in the finance and business news. Then the best way to do that is to actually read the press releases. It's to stay up to date on the actual data and keep up with the raw data of what's happening. Now, if you don't want to do all that, the next best thing is to join Market Briefs, which is my free financial newsletter that's keeping you up to date on what's happening in the top finance and business news into a fun, easy to read and witty newsletter. Even if you don't have a financial degree, I promise you're going to love reading it. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, it's completely free and the link to join it is right in the description below. So now the question is, What's going to determine if we're in a recession? Because traditionally, the definition of a recession has been two quarters, aka six months of GDP decline. And we already have that. However, we're essentially now saying that in order to have a recession, there has to be much more. It has to be more of a broad-based decline. And so we haven't officially gone into a recession and this is where now the question is, what's going to determine if we're in a recession? Because once it gets determined that we are in a recession, then the start date of the recession gets backdated to when the economic decline started. So let's assume that the economy continues to go down and four months from now that it gets announced that we are in a recession. If that happens four months from now, they're going to look back and they're going to say, oh, the economy started to shrink back in February of 2022, not in November or December of 2022. So then they'll say that the recession actually started in January or February of 2022. So that's how it works uh, in the recession side of how it works. But this is where now you want to pay attention to the Federal Reserve Bank, like I've been saying, because they are going to help determine how far down and how drastically down we go with interest rates. because. The faster they increase interest rates, the slower the economy is going to get and the harder it's going to burst the bubble because as interest rates go up, it makes borrowing money more expensive and that slows down business, right? So in terms of an economy, an economy runs on spending. The more money somebody has, the more money they can spend. The more money I spend, the more money somebody else makes. Well, when you increase interest rates, spending money becomes more expensive because we live in a credit-based system, which means that people spend money not based off of how much cash they have in the bank, but based off of how much credit or debt they can qualify for. And so if people spend money based off of how much debt or credit they can qualify for, and now your debt is more expensive, people will spend less money. So if people are spending less money because interest rates are higher, that then slows down the economy even more. And right now, the Federal Reserve Bank is working to raise interest rates in order to fight inflation. And so inflation has come down slightly, but we're still at extremely high inflation, like still near record highs. And until inflation comes down, the Federal Reserve Bank says that they're not going to stop raising interest rates. Now, this brings up the next question. How far down does inflation have to go? The Federal Reserve Bank, as of today, is saying that they're not going to stop the inflation fight until they bring inflation down to 2%. So we have quite a bit of ways to go for inflation to come down, which means that the Federal Reserve Bank, if they stay true to their word, are going to get much more aggressive with interest rates to bring down inflation. And another driving factor of that is the fact that According to the Federal Reserve Bank's data, our economy is extremely strong because they're looking at jobs. And according to the way that they analyze jobs, the job market is great. More people have jobs than ever, so the economy is strong. So if the economy is strong, that's more motive or at least it's more okayness to go and raise interest rates. And if inflation is high, that's more reason to raise interest rates. So they have a reason to raise interest rates because inflation is high and it's okay for them to do that because according to the Fed, that job support is strong. So this gives them the 
green light to go and raise interest rates. And as long as you see these two factors, they will continue to raise interest rates. And the faster they raise interest rates, the faster spending will slow, the faster spending slows, the more the economy will go down, the more the economy goes down, the more kind of this negative spiral we'll see of an economic slowdown and recession. So these are the factors that you want to be paying attention to, where it's inflation levels, it's the economic levels, and then it's what the Federal Reserve Bank does. Because there's also a chance that they change course and some way down the line they say, all right, we need to worry more about the economy than we do inflation. And then they switch the fight. So this is where you really want to stay up to date on what's happening. We're keeping you updated on market briefs. So if you haven't joined yet, make sure you do that. If you're talking about real generational wealth, this is the way that it's done. And I'm just talking about building a system that is foolproof. And the way that you can do that is you need an income stream. That way now you're not worried about pulling out all of your principal while you're alive. You want to be living off of the cash flow, the income, the dividends, or the royalty.